Hi, everybody. This is Julian from AWS. Welcome to episode 15 of my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future episodes. In those difficult times, I hope you're doing okay, as good as possible, and I hope you're safe. In this episode, I'm going to focus on the latest news from AWS on machine learning, and we're going to look at high-level services mostly. Uh, Deep Composer, Transcribe Medical, and Personalize. So let's get started. All right, so big news on uh, Deep Composer this week. Uh, the service is now generally available and we added a whole bunch of features. So if you remember, Deep Composer was launched in preview at reInvent 2019. And uh, so you could use it in a console. You could use either the, the virtual keyboard or the, the real keyboard like this one. And uh, you could record some tunes and use pre-trained models to generate compositions. So now you can all use Deep Composer. Again, you don't need to have a keyboard. Uh, we'll get back to that. But you can very well start with the virtual keyboard in the console. And we added some features. So uh, we have some uh, what we call the learning capsules. And so basically uh, short lessons on generative AI and uh, generative adversarial networks, introducing the theory, what those uh, things are, how to train them, how to evaluate them. And this should give you confidence to move on to in-console training uh, because now you can train your own models with Deep Composer. Okay, I'm going to show you the console in a second. So we have some easy steps to train a model without writing a line of machine learning code, just working in the console, and then you can use your own models to generate compositions. Okay, and uh, so the physical keyboard is now available for sale on uh, Amazon.com, and if you buy one and if you link. Uh, uh, the, the keyboard to your AWS account, you get uh, three extra months of uh, free trial. So uh, I guess as an incentive to buy the keyboard. But again, you don't need to buy the keyboard. You can use the virtual keyboard in the console or you can use pretty much any uh, MIDI keyboard out there and it should work fine. But hey, if you want extra, uh, extra time to train your models, then buying the keyboard, uh, it might be an interesting option. Okay. So uh, if we move to the uh, Deep Composer console, we can see a few more things, okay? Uh, so if you've never seen that thing before, here it is, okay? So you can play music. Uh, we have some pre-recorded tunes that you can uh, generate compositions for, or of course you can click on the virtual keyboard or play on a physical keyboard and record tunes, all right? But I guess the new thing, the main thing is creating a model. So you would just go here, create a model, select one of those two GANs architectures. Okay, we have some details. And don't worry, I mean, if you're not familiar with this, this is exactly what the learning capsules are for. They will explain what those things are and how they work. Then you select a data set to train the model on. Okay, symphony, jazz, pop, rock. You can set some hyperparameters, but you can leave those uh, as is. I guess for the first few trainings, uh, don't go wild and just use the defaults. Give the model a name and click and off it goes. And it's gonna train for about eight hours and then you can use that model to uh, to generate composition. So this is a really similar experience to uh, DeepRacer if you use DeepRacer before uh, to train reinforcement learning models for the uh, autonomous driving car. This is really similar, just work in the console tweak parameters a bit and try to generate interesting models. All right. So again, this is now available to everyone and uh, and you can have fun playing mu music. And no, I'm not going to play anything because I, I literally cannot play the keyboard or anything else for that matter. So that would be an absolute disaster. But go and check out Deep Composer and play some music. All right. OK, the second uh, announcement is on one of my favorite services, and this service is Transcribe Medical. So Transcribe Medical was also launched at reInvent 2019, and uh, it's uh, basically an extension of Transcribe. Transcribe is our uh, speech-to-text service, and Transcribe Medical is an extension of that for medical vocabulary. And uh, well, I, I did uh, cover this service 
quite a lot and uh, I will add links to the blog post and to this uh, short video demo which I recorded at the time showing me reading uh, medical text which I have no idea what it is really but uh, the important bit is transcribe medical picks it up perfectly and uh, and it's quite impressive so the announcement here is that you can now do uh, batch transcription so if you have a bunch of audio files with either uh, medical conversations or medical dictation you can just upload them to s3 and launch a transcription job okay so this is really as easy as this okay input your data in an s3 bucket uh, select either conversation type or dictation type and i'm guessing the the only difference here is going to be uh, the number of speakers so uh, if you have conversation that transcribe will work uh, and, and try to identify the different speakers versus dictation which should only be one person speaking okay so input data in S3 and then output data in S3, okay? And you can encrypt results uh, with KMS if uh, you want to keep all those medical uh, documents safe. And, uh, and of course you should, right? So pretty cool new feature from uh, Transcribe Medical, just making it easier and easier to process medical uh, documents at scale. And uh, the third one I want to talk about is well another of my uh, favorite services, uh, Amazon Personalize. So Personalize is a high-level service that lets you build easily uh, personalization and recommendation models. And again, I've covered this uh, quite a bit in the past. And uh, now we're happy to launch recommendation scores in Personalize. And there's a really nice blog post from uh, my colleague Brandon here. I'll, I'll include the link to that. So let me let me explain what this is. So previously, when you trained a recommendation model, okay, the high level process would be upload a data set to S3, okay, and the minimal data set was this uh, user item interaction data set, pretty much a CSV file showing that user one two three as uh, interacted with the item four five six, etc. etc. Okay. So showing interaction between users and items, which could be anything, uh, movies you like, songs you like, uh, product you bought, you know, anything you want. And uh, so then we would train uh, a model, which Personalize calls a solution, okay? And this solution would be based on a recipe. And a recipe is more than uh, an algo. A recipe is, of course, an algorithm, for the specific problem you're trying to solve, but it's also pre-processing uh, steps for the data and it's uh, tuning steps to uh, optimize the uh, accuracy and the, the machine learning performance of your model, etc., etc. Et okay, and you could either pick a recipe yourself or you could use AutoML and um, and just let Personalize figure out which recipe would work best. Okay, so here's a, here's one I trained a while ago, and here I used this uh, HRNN uh, algo, which is a, a deep learning algo for um, uh, recommendation. And as you can imagine from the name, it's based on the recurrent neural networks. Okay, so I trained it on this data set, and then I deployed it to a campaign, um, and we could run some predictions there. Okay, so using that campaign, I could not ask for a prediction, and just enter a user ID here. And, uh, and get some recommendations. And I would get a list of, uh, in this case, movies, because this is a movies data set. I would get a list of movies that this user might like, okay? But I wouldn't get any other information besides the, uh, uh, the movie ID, okay? So, so thanks to this new feature, now we have recommendation scores. And recommendation scores uh, will let you know which are the top items that a user may enjoy, okay? And as you saw, these are pretty tiny scores because in fact, um, each item in the data set has its own score and all the scores add up to one. Okay, so if you have thousands and thousands of items in the data set, you, you will end up having tiny scores. But the scores are relative to uh, one another, okay? So if you use personalization, each item gets a score and they all add up to one. If you're uh, working with a ranking model, then um, the scores will be higher because 
we will only generate scores for um, the items that need to be ranked. So it's going to be a subset of the data set and obviously um, we will have uh, uh, fewer items there and hence the score will be will be higher okay and uh, machine learning uh, freaks will recognize the softmax function <laughs> which we use a lot in uh, in machine learning and deep learning okay so each score is between zero and one and they all add up to one okay um, and the cool thing is uh, as I've said this is really a, a model that I trained uh, ages ago and I didn't have to uh, retrain it so I just run that demo again and uh, voila right and we get scores so if you have um, models that you already deployed uh, can already uh, campaigns that are already running then uh, chances are you don't need to do anything right uh, as long as you use uh, one of the algos that actually supports those uh, those scores right which is mostly the uh, HRNN and, and a few more then uh, you should be fine just uh, run predictions and you will see scores popping up okay so this is really cool this is a uh, one of the top requests that I got on on personalized so it should make a lot of people happy hopefully all right well that's it for personalized all right that's it for this episode again please subscribe to my channel and please stay safe I hope to see you on the road pretty soon until then keep rocking <music>